Perspective is not what you see, it's how you see it. Over 100 years ago, two shoe salesmen were sent to a remote part of Africa. And when they got there, they saw that nobody was wearing shoes in this remote part of that continent. And so the first salesman telegraphed, telegrammed back to America, please bring me home. Nobody here wears shoes. The second salesman telegraphed back home and said, please send all the shoes you have here because nobody here wears shoes. They saw the same thing, but how they saw it was different. What they saw was the same. How they saw it was different. And I want you to choose today, no matter how bad it looks, let's choose to expect the good. No matter how bad you've been through something, let's choose to Romans 8, 28, that thing. And no matter how broken something is, let's choose to Romans 8, 28, all the pieces in God's hands will always end up better than they are or they were before. This is the God we get to serve. This is the God that we get to call family father. Notice where an announcer sits in a sporting event. He doesn't sit on the 50 yard line in a football game. He doesn't sit in the closest seat. He doesn't sit on the sidelines. He sits in a high booth to be able to see everything, to be able to call the plays, to be able to tell us if we're watching or if we're hearing it on the radio. I remember as a kid, I would love to sit, lay down on the couch and I'd turn the radio on and listen to the Detroit Tigers baseball games. Maybe you listen to the Chicago Cubs or the Chicago White Sox baseball games. I don't want to start a fight here. I don't want to cause a political division here. The Chicago White Sox or Chicago Cubs, Republicans or Democrats, independents. None of that matters. We're all children of God, sons and daughters of God. Amen. But let's not let life divide us. That's a good word from from the Lord right now. Let's not let anything divide us this time around this year. Whenever the next election comes, let's not let anything divide us. Let's be bigger than that. Let's be above that. Let's live kingdom ways, not worldly ways. Let's live believing the best about everybody rather than seeing the worst in somebody who doesn't agree with you. Let's find the good in what they don't agree with me about so that I can learn and I can grow and I can have empathy and I can get along and I can be bigger than a situation and be bigger than an opinion and be bigger than a mistake. Kindness and empathy is never wrong. But if we would just get a hold of God is doing something bigger than what we see. We would have amazing peace in our lives and joy. The announcer is not on the field. He's above it looking. And isn't it funny? We know whether a play should be overturned before the coach knows. We know because the, the, the coach is on is on the field. He's on the sidelines. We get the advantage of seeing it from every angle, from all the different camera angles. And we know and we you, you know if your team had a call against them and you see on the replay that that was wrong, a wrong call. If that ref does not turn that call around, you are going to get in your car and you are going to drive to that game and you are going to find that guy and you are going to give him something, a piece of your mind. But I'm telling you, we are like that sometimes. But we see things that even the people on the field don't see. We see, yeah, they really fumbled that or we see he really missed that that tag at third base. We see that stuff because we have the advantage of a higher perspective, a different way of looking at it, a way that is above just the daily grind of it all. Amen. At the Hayden plant planetarium in New York City, there's a sign that simply states all seats provide equal viewing of the universe. All seats provide equal viewing of the universe. They're all no matter where their seat is, they're all looking up at the universe. But the kids think when they get out of the bus on the field trip, they go running to, into the planetarium and they go to find the best seat. And then the guide has to remind them there. Every seat is the best seat. Everybody is going to see the whole show that the universe puts on because everybody's seat 
is the perfect seat to see the universe, the perfect seat to see the stars. You know, if it's dark at night without any clouds, you can see the stars up in the sky from Chicago. You can see the stars up in the sky from California. You can see the stars up in the sky from Russia. You can see the stars up. In the, we all have a, the best view of the universe, even with a telescope is better. But you understand the point about being in the same seat, the best seat. Every seat is the best seat. And we need to realize that because Jesus is the same with us. It's the same. We have the best seat in the house. We have the best seat in the universe from which we should view life. And where is that seat? I think Ephesians chapter two, verse six tells us where that seat is, because the Bible says that Christ raised us. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So so now we have the best seat in the house. Where is the best seat? It is with him. Where is that with him in heavenly places? Where is the heavenly places in Christ Jesus? We're not just in the heavenly places. We're in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There are demon powers that are in heavenly places, but they're not in Christ Jesus. In fact, there are angels that are in heavenly places, but they are not in Christ Jesus. You and I have the advantage of not only are we raised up with him, not only are we seated with him, not only are we seated with him in heavenly places, but where are where can we be found in Christ? So if the demon comes pointing his finger at us, he's pointing his finger at Christ and Jesus is pointing his finger back saying, stay away from me. I already paid for you. I already paid in blood. I have authority over you. And so do those that are in me. Boy, when you begin to see your life from the viewpoint that you're seated with Christ, you're raised up with him, you're seated with him in heavenly places, you're in Christ Jesus. Listen, there's only two places that you can possibly be in the spiritual world of this universe. You can be in Christ Jesus or you can be in sin, but you can't be in both places at the same time. Without Jesus, you are in sin because the very sin that you're in is the sin of not receiving the gift of salvation. But when you are in Christ, you are no longer in sin. That doesn't mean you're never going to commit a sin again. It just means that God doesn't see you in sin when he sees you in Christ. When you are in when you are in sin without Christ, it doesn't matter how many good things you do in life. You're still in sin because you're not in Christ. But when you are in Christ Jesus, you are no longer in sin. You are the righteousness of God and you must live from that perspective, from that place that I have authority. I am forgiven. I'm the righteousness of God. God doesn't see my sins. He doesn't focus on that. So I'm not going to focus on it either. I'm in Christ. I'm in heavenly places. I'm seated with him. And therefore, I rule over the principalities and powers of the air. I have authority over Satan. I have dominion in this life. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. This is the perspective that we must wake up for with every day, knowing that we are with him, knowing that we're not we're not in the nitty gritty of having to overcome the devil. We have already overcome him in Christ. We're not we don't have to get in the nitty gritty of trying to get the victory. We already have the victory in Christ. We don't not in the nitty gritty of having to reach our way up to a high place where we can get a good seat in in the heavenly places. We're already seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And therefore, we have the best seat in the house.